But you ever wonder how water gets to your house? Well, my daughter Rebecca and I wondered about it the other day, and you know what? We didn't have any idea how the water got to the faucet. Now, we liked the water, but we didn't know where it came from. So today, we're going to find out. We're going to follow the journey of the water in this glass and see where it came from. Let's go. And here we are on the banks of the beautiful Cumberland River where that glass of water starts. So why can't we just dip into the old Cumberland and take a drink? Right now, now that was a mistake. I mean, this is definitely not drinking water. I tell you what, let's get out into the river and see what else is in there. As you probably know, we use this river a lot. Uh, boats and barges and recreation, and of course, animals swim and live in the river. And Mother Nature herself deposits lots of things in the river too. Like this, swim it. <laughs> like this stick. So the sticks and the leaves have to be screened out. And guess what else has to be screened out? Here we go. Oh, wait. <laughs> this fish. What? <laughs> Hold on. Oh, there you go, buddy. See, the water from this river has to go through a lot of different processes before we get to drink it. Now here in Nashville, Metro Water Services has people at two different treatment plants that work around the clock and put a lot of care into cleaning and preparing our water. First, the water is taken out of the river by, by big pipes that are underneath the water. They're just above the bottom of the stream. As the water goes into those pipes, we have big screens that make sure that the sticks and the fish and any other big things in the water don't get in. So let's go see where the water goes when it's pulled into those pipes. The water from the river is pulled into this room, the intake screening room. And they use these large moving screens behind me to catch the smaller debris. And when we turn this machine on, it's going to get very loud. So I'm probably going to have to shout to get above the sound. Here we go. You see the screen? The water shoots right through the screen and catches all the debris right here. Oh, I'm out of here. Now that the water from the Cumberland River is cleaned of debris, it flows into the pump house. There are five separate pumps that bring the water in from the river after it's been screened and then send it out to the basin area so that it can be prepared to become drinking water. Right now, we're about 60 feet down in the bottom of the pumping station. You can see the top of the pumping station way up there. This is the basin area where the water arrives from the pumping station. Different chemicals are added before the water enters these pools right here so that the process of coagulation can begin. Coagulation allows the organisms, the bacteria, and the other undesirable elements that are in the water to stick together so they can be taken out so that we don't drink them. The coagulation process leads to the flocculation process. Coagulation leads to flocculation. Coagulation leads to flocculation. Coagulation leads to flocculation. Coagulation, hey, hey, they're big words, aren't they? but they rhyme, coagulation, flocculation. Okay, here's how I break it down. It's kind of like making pancakes. 
You know when you put all the ingredients in the bowl and they start to stick together? That's coagulation. And flocculation is when you get the spoon and you stir it all up, you know, slow and thorough so that all the ingredients get, get mixed together real good. You see how these particles in the water are beginning to stick together and form larger clumps? Hey, they are flocking together. Flocculation. Next, the water is sent to these settling basins right here where the flock, the heavy, clumped together particles, start to drop to the bottom. And they pass through a grid of tubes below the surface of the water, like this one right here. This is the sedimentation process. All the sediment, the, the coagulated and flocculated particles drop to the bottom, leaving a much cleaner water to continue on its journey. Once coagulation and flocculation and sedimentation have taken place, there are a couple of other processes that the water must go through. Filtration and the addition of final chemicals, including chlorine and fluoride. This final process takes place in this beautiful filter building, which was constructed in the early 1900s. The water comes into this building from the pools in the basin area outside. It's distributed into these tanks where it passes through very fine filters that catch all the small particles that have remained in the water, allowing the clean water to pass through. Chlorine is added to make sure that any bacteria or viruses that have made it this far are destroyed, terminated. Fluoride is added to help us all have stronger teeth. When the water leaves this building, it goes into a series of underground storage tanks, clear wells. And from these clear wells, the water returns to the pumping station so it can make its final journey to our homes. So now the water is ready to drink, right? Well we had better check in order to make sure. We're now inside the operator's lab where the water undergoes tests to make sure that it meets or exceeds the high standards of the EPA, which by the way, is a higher standard than the bottled water you may drink. In this lab, they can test the water from any point in the system and make the adjustments that might be needed. And now that the water has been tested, it's ready to be sent to your house. We're at the top level of the pumping station right now, where the finished water from the clear wells is brought in and then sent out to our homes. These pumps are magnificent machines. Let's take big number six right here. This pump has a 2,500 horsepower motor and in conjunction with the other pumps can move as much as 90 million gallons of water per day. This baby can rock the house. And old number six better rock the house because the pumps in there have to move the water through more than 2,700 miles of water pipes that travel underneath Nashville. That's more than enough pipe to go all the way from Nashville to Los Angeles and beyond. We're inside the distribution control room right now, where Metro Water Services monitors the water distribution system. Now, you may not know it, but geographically, Nashville sits in a basin, kind of like a bowl. And when the water leaves this river elevation, the land rises higher and higher as it moves away from the city. And as we all know, water will not flow uphill on its own. So there are 57 smaller pumping stations and another 40 reservoirs around our community to make sure that the water gets to your house with plenty of pressure for your shower. These gauges, readouts, and indicators on the wall show how the water is lifted 
from lower levels in the city, indicated here at the bottom of the system, to the highest points in the city, indicated here at the top, where it has to be pumped five different times in order to get to the homes in these areas. This distribution system is managed by a highly sophisticated monitoring network that can view the water pressure and the volume of water in the system at any given point along the way. So if the water in a reservoir drops to a certain level, the system makes sure that more water goes to that reservoir. I think our water is in good hands. And you know what? That finishes the journey of our water. Except for one thing. I need a good drink of water. And this is great water. You know, I suggest that the next time you reach for bottled water in the store, remember that this water right here is better, cheaper, and comes from Nashville. This water started in the Cumberland River. Then it went to the pump house and the basin area and the filter building. Remember that? After that, it was tested. Then it went back to the pump house, through the distribution system, and it ends up right here. Kind of amazing when you think about it, huh? You want a drink? <laughs> you can drink it straight from the tap. You can, you can chill it. You can heat it. You can freeze it. But no matter what you do, you can't do without water. Good, clean water. Brought to you by Metro Water Services. Cheers. <laughs>